Hello there and welcome to my top five games of 2023. First off, I do apologize that this is so late. I have had a very busy ending to the year and a very busy beginning to the year, but we're finally doing it. Hooray, good stuff. Every year I try to do one of these because I think they're just really cute to, to do and I play a lot of games throughout the year. And it's kind of cool to do like an honorable mention kind of thing to all of the great games that I really enjoyed. So why don't we just begin my first game, which I'm not going to go too much into because I couldn't decide if I wanted it in my top five or not. So I was like, we'll just give it honorable mention is Starfield. Good game, just not quite in my top five this year. So thanks Starfield for it being an awesome game. Just didn't quite make the cut this year. Number five for our games of the year is Star Ocean, the second story R, which is a remake of a game, but I absolutely loved it. I've never actually played the original one, so I don't even have that nostalgia factor here. I just thought that the game was really good fun and I really enjoyed it. So the story in this game is really sweet. I don't want to give away any spoilers in this in case you haven't played it as well, but it's really good fun. The gameplay is fun. It is not turn-based RPG. You actually get to control your person in real time. And I thought that that was actually a really good time. And I really enjoyed the style of combat in this. Did get a little bit stale towards the end, but there's enough kind of changes throughout the game to keep things interesting and cool throughout the game. The music in this is very sweet. Nothing really to write home about, but Indeed. overall, really nice game. Definitely enjoyed it. And I played it all the way through. Number four for our top games of 2023 is Lies of P. Now, I am a sucker for a Soulsborne game, and so I think this was destined to be in one of the best games of the year for me, but I loved how they took everything together from the best bits of Dark Souls, the best bits of Bloodborne, kind of took things that people want from those games, like they updated the UI to make things a lot easier, my favorite thing in this game is that there's actually quest markers. So if there's a quest that you need to go back to, it actually shows you on your fast travel screen, which for someone like me who forgets what they're doing 90% of the time in a game, this was an amazing thing to have and made things a little bit more streamlined for me and made things a lot less complicated, which I absolutely loved. Obviously the gameplay in this, it's more um, Sekiro style where you need to kind of parry a little bit more. But there were a lot of bosses that I didn't need to parry in because I hate parrying and was able to just dodge around and win through that way, which is good. The music is good, good fun. No complaints there. Um, definitely, definitely good stuff. And the audio design where there's a lot of kind of like quietness throughout makes the game feel a little bit more ominous and creepy. And I really like that they decided that. The bosses in this game are so cool. The different designs of it are just super fascinating, and I really love how they made this game. Number three of our top games of the year is, of course, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I actually haven't finished this game yet because it is huge and there's so much to do in it, but that's what makes it amazing. There's so much to do in it. I have barely even been down to the depths and haven't even scratched the surface of them there. And I'm like 80 hours in. There's just so much to do in this game. So many side quests, so many things to find, so much to do. I don't know how anybody 100%s this game. <laughs> Kudos to you that do, because it's crazy. I love the story of this one. I think this is maybe one of my favorite Zelda stories. It's just really nice and sweet. And again, I still haven't finished it, but so far I'm really enjoying it. And it's been really, really fun. The cutscenes are so cute and really well done. And, you know, the gameplay is typical Breath of the Wild kind of style, but there's nothing wrong with that. It's really good. I love the abilities that they gave you this with all the engineering you can do. I've created some great things and some not so great things. And it's, it's a good time always experimenting with different ways to do things. My number two game of the year is I'm sure lots of people can guess. I absolutely loved this game and I played the crap out of it, is Final Fantasy 16. I loved the story in this game. Oh my god, it was amazing. Everything had me hooked in it. I was just drawn in from the very first time. Even after playing the demo, I was like, I need this game. I need to play this game. This is so good. So, so good. The story is so cool. It really makes you emotional. There's so much going on in it that really like keeps you wanting to play more. 
And every day waking up, getting ready to stream, I was just so excited to play more Final Fantasy 16 and see what was going on. The gameplay is good fun. I will say it's a little disappointing that they don't have as much elemental kind of things going on, but there was a lot of different styles of fighting that you could do. I think it did get a little bit stale by the end of the game, but I often don't change up my play style. So I was using the same abilities kind of for the most part of the game. So I think if you were to change that up and there are lots of things to change up, you might have a lot more fun with that. I love that they let you play as the big summons. Oh my gosh, it was so cool. I felt so epic playing them. It was amazing. The music is incredible. I love how they've like worked in old Final Fantasy music into the scores. Everything yeah. is just okay. big and loud and beautiful. And some of the songs literally gave me chills and it was just so, so cool. I normally keep my volume at like 15, 20 while I'm streaming because having that much audio throughout the day gives me a bit of a headache. This I had pumped up to like 40 or 50 all the time because I was just like, I want to hear all of the songs and like all of their glory because they're so good. The cutscenes are so epic. I can't believe this didn't win more awards, game awards this year. It just, everything is so good. Like, I normally kind of keep an eye on my chat as I'm playing, but no, I was eyes glued to the screen watching as all these incredible things were happening. It was so cool. Overall, absolutely loved Final Fantasy 16. And I hope that, you know, things keep being as this epic for new Final Fantasy games because it was so much fun and so good. My number one pick for the game of the year for 2023 is maybe a little bit unexpected, but I absolutely loved this game, Dave the Diver. I know you're like, how could this compete with like all these other games? It's crazy. But this game was just phenomenal. I love that you got to go in oceans. I'm an ocean lover. So as much as I didn't want to, you know, kill all the fish, I loved being able to explore the ocean and go deeper and find out the mysteries of the ocean and the story of the ocean. And just that part of the game was so cool to me, just exploring and seeing new things and finding new fish and just seeing all that kind of stuff about the ocean and exploring more. It was just really good. I, I love being able to just swim. It's fantastic. There's a second part to Dave the Diver as well, where you're running a sushi restaurant. And I love those sorts of games. I remember in high school playing games where you like have to serve people and you have to pick up dishes and serve dishes and stuff really fast. I loved those games. They're so much fun. And so running a sushi restaurant was like a really nice kind of wind down from fishing all day and gives you another aspect of a game that keeps things really interesting. And you need to make food critics happy and serve them the food that they want and all these really neat things. It's just a really cool way to organize your game into having days and nights and you need to manage your time and whether you want to go extra fishing at night or if you want to have a longer serving for dinner at night. It's very cool. It's a very, very well done game. The cutscenes in this game are also hilarious. Um, the first time you watch them, of course, they get a little bit repetitive, but you can skip them, which is so nice. You weren't forced to watch them all the time. They're so funny. There's all these just really silly cutscenes of funny things that happen that make the game so much fun. And I just giggled through like most of them because they were just a really good time. If you haven't had a chance yet to play Dave the Diver, I highly recommend it. It's a very, very fun game. Great price point at only $30. I have 38.7 hours in this game, which I don't know how. It just time flew by while I was playing it because I just loved going fishing and exploring and swimming with sharks and finding all of these really awesome things. There's little scenes of mini like dolphin adventures you can go on and stuff. Like it's just, just an amazing game. Recommend it if you have not had a chance yet. Thank you very much for tuning in for my top five favorite games of 2023. Again, apologies, this is so late, but at least we made it finally. What are you looking forward to in 2024? What are the games that you are most excited about? Let me know in the comments. I'm very excited for many games this year. Mostly another Final Fantasy, the next bit of the remake. I'm so excited. <laughs> so that's going to be probably in my next Game of the Year video. I hope, hopefully it's really good. But I will see you for this next year. Don't forget to like and subscribe and take care.